Welcome back, it's Evanusa57 here. I am back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One, and today I will be showing you how to turn your guild marks into gold. Now, before I get started, I do understand that some of you don't have a lot of guild marks, some of you may have an abundance of guild marks, so you can reference my other guild mark farming videos if you wish, and I would advise you that this is not what I do personally, but I have been requested to make this video as people did not understand exactly what was going on. So the first step is, of course, having guild marks. And you can get those through many different types of farming or just using the daily influence that you gain. Second step is going to be to actually come to the guild stronghold. And I am sitting here in the guild hall, which I'm going to go ahead and run out and show you where you need to go because you are going to have to go to the new temporary vendors that they released and you'll have to see if your guild or a guild in the alliance has the right vendor that you need which if they do you're going to be buying well really one of a couple different items now i don't know if this is exactly the way that most people do it or what but this is how i have done it and it works it's just not my favorite thing so before i get started i have 2321 gold and i got that gold by doing my own method not by doing this method which you're going to be looking for the bloomerary trader or however you want to pronounce that and if your guild has one you can buy specialty materials, which are the Mastercraft materials, and you can buy the basic materials. So you can buy coal and charcoal and iron ore and rock salt and all of this stuff you can buy for literally like one guild mark. Now, I've sat here and done the math. You can buy the rock salt. You can buy the moon sea salt. They both equate to the exact same thing. And if you take... 30,000 guild marks, which is the maximum guild marks that you can have, that would give you roughly on the moon sea salt, 90,000 moon sea salt, which you would then be able to trade or sell to a vendor for roughly 2,000, I think 250, if I did my math correct, gold. So almost as much gold as I have. And I suppose that's not a bad thing. Uh, and you definitely could do it, but I don't know if I would personally want to do that because I like to make diamonds with my guild marks. But if you want gold to either buy things with or trade or whatever, and you have an abundance of guild marks, you can do this. So let's say that you just use the influence that you gain daily, maybe on a double guild marks event where you could gain maybe 800 to 1,000. Let's just say that you gain 1,000 guild marks in a day from whatever you were doing. So I'm going to spend 1,000 guild marks, which will give me 3,000 moon sea salt, and it's the same price whether you do moon sea salt or rock salt. I tried the other ones, but they really didn't like do that much for me. So let's go ahead and enter the amount that I wish to buy. I wish to buy 1,000, but of course... You can only buy them in quantities of 100, which is very, very annoying. And one of the reasons why I don't like doing this, but there's 100 moon sea salt. And then I'm not even going to bother to enter the number because you can't do it that way. So you have to sit here and continually buy those items. And I'm just going to spend a thousand guild marks. That's all I'm going to do. And then you'll see how much I get when I sell them. You can also sell these for astral diamonds, but it's not really worth it to sell them straight for astral diamonds. So it's personal preference, whatever you want to do, literally whatever you want to do with it. I'm still on the fence. I'm doing this just for the purposes of the video. And then I will explain how I make my gold at the end. So that's a thousand guild marks, 3000 moon sea salt. You can go to any professions vendor or any vendor for that matter doesn't matter if it's a professions vendor or not 
and then you'll have to find the item in your profession resources. And that might actually take a second if you're like me. And you will see that you have multiple stacks of moon sea salt in 999 stacks. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to sell all of the moon sea salt. And that will give me actually only 25 gold, which is a little bit less than what my calculations were. So you might not be able to get the full 2,000 and change. Um, let's see, 1,000 for 25... Let me just double check my math here real quick. Actually, yeah, that, that's going to be less. My math was off. Uh, you're only going to be having maybe around 1,000-ish gold. Uh, the whole point of this is if I enter three, the amount I wish to sell, three of them is basically uh, 750 seven silver 50 copper but we're just going to figure that I want to sell and we'll test this you see how much gold I have 2321 and it is late so I could have done my math backwards and I'll sell that and I have to sell three of those stacks which is going to give me about a total of 75 gold so that's two stacks and then I just have to find the third stack because I had a couple hundred of it to begin with from opening profession nodes. So there we go. I now have 2,396 gold, which was about, let's see, 25 times 3, 75 gold. So roughly 75 gold per 1,000 guild marks. And some people have done some finagling around with this, saying that they could get a little bit more for it, like here and there. But this is the the base amount. And I did my math backwards at the beginning. If I can get 75 gold per 1,000 guild marks, and you have 30,000 guild marks, then what that would translate to is the 2,250. So... Initially, my first number that I gave you, that first number was correct. I just did my math backwards in explaining per 1,000 what you would get. So please don't be too upset about that. But yeah, you can get 2,250 gold if you do it with that method. Now, like I said, some people have experimented around with trying to buy the differing items like buying iron ore and then waiting for an event and posting it on the market and making things or buying rock salt and trading it or buying the moon sea salt but then trading the moon sea salt for items to get guild marks with and then buying more moon sea salt and that's how the players that I have discussed this particular method with have told me that they were able to get like an average of 2,500 gold per 30,000 guild marks. But that's a lot of, you know, going back and forth and a lot of trading and stuff like that, which is not something that I really want to get into and I don't want to spend the extra time. So I am only going off of the base value, which is 30,000 guild marks equals 2,250 gold. And then, of course, you can go ahead and turn in whatever items that you have like for instance I have these little tyranny of dragons vouchers they're not worth much but I can turn them in and get a couple guild marks which I could make into a little bit more silver so completely up to you if you guys actually want to do this with your daily allotment of you know guild marks <laughs> but the issue that I have with this, and I'm going to explain the issue, is because it actually has lowered the value of gold. And a lot of people think that, oh, guild marks are super easy to come by, so I have all these guild marks, I am going to go ahead and trade them for gold, and then they're wanting even higher prices for items for gold. I don't 
really particularly like that. Uh, so this is definitely a trade-off. There's a big thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this, and that is the fact that depending on how you get your guild marks, if you are buying items to donate for guild marks or farming or using potions or whatever the case might be, you have a cost for those guild marks. And I prefer to buy the Mastercraft skull, uh, scrolls, not skulls, with my guild marks. That's what I prefer to do. Whether you prefer to do that or not, depending on whether you're doing Mastercraft, is of course entirely up to you, but that is what I like to do. So normally how I make my gold is through the leadership profession and just through killing enemies as I go, you know, for whatever, I will pick up the gold that they drop and I will pick up any item classified as a treasure item and then sell that treasure item for gold which is how I have been able to get basically almost 2,400 gold. And that is not counting the gold that I spend every single day to make like the dread ring key to make the Sharandar key. Like prime example, I had a Malabog's key ready just to show you. So to make that Malabog's key, I spend three gold usually every day to make that and some more gold making the dread ring key it's up to you i make enough gold off of leadership and just picking up the treasure items from dealing damage in dungeons and doing my dailies to pay for that gold and have extra on hand but this is a very effective way if you have a surplus of guild marks or simply would like to know what all the fuss about guild marks has been and why the price or value of gold has gone down for certain things. Here you go. You have the information. What you choose to do with it is entirely up to you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you can, make sure you leave a like on the video. Any comments are more than welcome. Let's hear what your opinions are. And of course, share the video with either your friends or guild mates. So until next time, stay frosty.